Good morning and welcome to Team Teaching Models for ICAPS IET, part of the Illinois Transitions Academy webinar series that we're running this spring. I'm Sarah Goldhammer from the Southern Illinois Professional Development Center. We're in partnership with ICSPS, the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support. Uh, this session is going to be recorded if anybody wants to, or any of your colleagues wants to uh, watch it later. Also, all attendees at this point are in listen-only mode. And if you have a question, please feel free to put that in the chat box and we'll be glad to address that. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to our director of SIPDC, Bevan Gibson. Good morning. I'd like to welcome um, our panelists for today, Kate Thomas from Elgin Community College and Itri Papanicola from College of DuPage. Let's get started. So, Itri, could you tell us about your ICAPS program and what specific career pathway is your focus? Yes, of course. Good morning, everyone. So um, the uh, ICAPS program that uh, I'm uh, navigating right now at College of DuPage is uh, with uh, a program called CompTIA, which is uh, an information technology uh, field, and uh, it helps students uh, pursue a job in the field of uh, technology, such as help desk technicians, uh, troubleshooters, hardware, software, and network associates. So pretty much all the technology that we use today, our phones, our printers, our computers, uh, they need some uh, support and they're the ones that uh, are going to be doing that. So it's a very uh, cool program and uh, pretty prestige right now. So so we're preparing them for, obviously for the GD and then in the same time uh, they're doing their preparation for this uh, CompTIA certification as well. Okay, and Kate, could you tell us about your ICAPS program and what specific career pathway is your focus? Um, my career pathway that I work with is the dental office aid program. Um, and I've done that now. This is my fourth semester doing it. And we are preparing students to um, help their dentist. Um, dental assistant is different than dental hygienist. Um, a dental assistant would help um, either the hygienist or the dentist. Um, in filling your cavity or doing an initial survey of your teeth. Um, the person who takes your x-rays at the dental office is most likely a dental assistant. Um, and then we do have other programs at ECC. Would you like me to reference those? Oh, sure. Um, we also offer welding, um, CNC, which is computer numerical controls, um, HVAC, um, and then we also offer a basic nurse's aid and a phlebotomy certificate together. Um, and then we've just added industrial maintenance technology as well. Um, so we have a pretty robust uh, system, um, and some of it's been around for quite a long time. Okay, thank you. Um, can I ask um, you, Kate, um, is your uh, ICAPS program specifically for a ASE students, ABE students, or ESL students? Um, we take every kind of student, actually. Um, when the program originally started, it was specific to just ABE and ESL students, um, but now it's available to every kind of student um, in the campus. In fact, in our dental office aid program, the program director has made it an opt-out program. You're in unless you have a very good reason why you don't want to be in. Um, it is only available to our full-time students in dental office aid. Um, the support in terms of other programs varies a bit, um, but it is very clearly open to any kind of student, ABE or ESL, or just a typical student. Okay, and, and Itri, um, is, is that the situation with you, or do you have separate ICAPS programs as well? Uh, we, we do have um, separate ICAPS programs. We have our CompTIA, uh, we also have Cisco, uh, manufacturing, as well, um, but um, as uh, you guys just mentioned, we um, offer it to all the students as well, uh, ESL and uh, AB, GD, HSC students, um, which is great. So, and they are all in the same classroom. They're not in uh, different classrooms as we're pursuing this. And to mention, um, even though uh, sometimes that can sound a little confusing because the GD, HSC students are pursuing their uh, GD and maybe some of the ESL students um, have the GD or the high school equivalency from their native countries. 
uh, they're still blended in and that gives the uh, ESL students an opportunity to learn um, you know, better English by being in uh, that GED class and uh, also strengthen their skills with their science and math. So it's actually very beneficial for them as well because after they complete this ICAPS program, a lot of them would like to take some more classes, college level obviously classes, and they would have to take uh, some placement exams. So them having that GD class uh, with the HSC GD students um, helps them a lot to score uh, high enough on those uh, exams. So okay, it makes a really good blend for sure. Okay, thank you. So so let's go ahead and ask you the next question, E3. How is team teaching provided in your ICAPS program? Sure. So basically, um, it's a two, two, and two uh, like model, uh, meaning uh, two days a week, uh, myself uh, with my cohort uh, and the uh, information technology instructor uh, are teaching them the uh, IT classes. Um, and that's when team teaching come in place. Uh, the other two days, uh, we do GD classes. And then um, the other two days throughout the week, we actually have something called resource time where myself uh, and my uh, ICAP students get together and we work on homework, test taking strategies, um, like the different skills that they have to uh, pretty much like enhance. Um, so that's kind of like the model uh, right now. Okay, and Kate, how is team teaching provided in your ICAPS program at Elgin? Um, well, I can, I'll speak specifically to the dental program I'm a part of. My students have um, four days of content from roughly nine in the morning until one o'clock. They have an anatomy class. Um, they have like a chair side class where they learn the names of the instruments and so forth. Um, and then on Wednesdays, they have infection control, and on Thursdays, they have materials. So they do those all day. I'm required to be um, in attendance for 50% of that time. Um, so I come in and out um, as kind of makes sense with what's going on. There's a lot of lab work, a lot of hands-on work. So the students do that. Um, sometimes I'm there helping, sometimes I'm not. It kind of depends, as I said, on the topic. And then on Fridays, I take them back for a three and a half credit hour support class where we spend extra time doing impressions or working on moisture control or um, we study vocabulary. The, the vocabulary and the material needed for the anatomy class is, is very complex um, and it's very difficult. Um, so we spend a lot of time practicing that, reviewing the material, um, you know, all of those kinds of things. So um, the, I think the key for us is the team teaching is very, very flexible. It depends on the topic um, where we end up. Okay. And, and let me just go ahead and ask you the next question. How do you plan for instruction? How do I plan for instruction? Um, well, the very first semester I did the dental, I was actually there for 100% of the material, their content. Um, and so then that gave me a base for um, what to do. Um, honestly, with my students, a lot of times during the week, I'll send an email out or I'll visually um, ask them face to face you know, what was difficult this week? What is it that you need to work on? Um, you know, for example, they need to learn all of the, um, the nerves in the head because they'll have to prepare the syringe for the dentist if you're getting anesthetic for um, a, tooth, a tooth filling. So they have to know where all of that is. And so, you know, they'll tell me during the week, Kate, that was impossible, totally didn't get it. Can you try again? And so then we would go through and, and repeat the material or review it. Um, or then they would say something like, yeah, yeah, we did um, you know, this, this um, cement this week and I feel really confident and we don't need you to cover any of that. So I guess for us, a lot of it is not necessarily in the moment, but within a day or two before class, I'm asking them what they know, what they need help with. Um, and then I know from previous semesters, I've got a good idea of what's going to um, make be more difficult for them. So I plan a little bit for that as well. Okay, great. Itri, how do you plan for instruction? Uh, a little similar to what Kate talked about. I actually, uh, I'm involved with them 100% of the um, content. So I'm with them during the uh, IT classes and then they're with me obviously during the GD classes. But um, one thing that I've developed uh, uh, with them throughout the years is the use of Blackboard. 
Um, so uh, that way, uh, even though we are together from uh, nine to 12, um, Monday through Thursday, um, you know, the, the rest of the day, they can go on Blackboard and um, work a little bit on the material as a hybrid per se mode. So this way they can, you know, uh, practice what they learn throughout the lesson. Uh, and then we have a we have a discussion board on Blackboard where, like Kate said, all those questions that they might have, they can actually uh, express themselves directly on Blackboard. And I get a notification immediately on my phone. Everyone is connected to it. So, um, you know, we don't unplug. Sometimes there could be something on a Saturday night. I'll try to find time to get my input in there because the other students can see that it's public to them, to the group or Sunday, um, it could be something that they might be studying and they, you know, if they, if they get the answer on the spot, it'll help them understand uh, the material a little better instead of waiting for uh, Monday morning. But it's, it's, a, it's definitely a commitment uh, from that point because uh, like Kate said too, sometimes it's the uh, terminology, like for them, it's the information technology terminology. So they're learning a lot of terms when it comes to their language arts and science but also they need terminology in that specific field that they're going to pursue a career in uh, so that is very important for them to get those answers but definitely we're constantly plugged in throughout this whole process okay thank you well, um itri what does the cte instructor bring to the table um in in your team teaching um realm there um so the CT instruct, instructor brings to the table a, a lot of different things. The, the most important thing, at least in my, um, with my cohorts, is the experience. Uh, our instructors in the information technology have been working with computers, most of them since the 80s when the computers came out. So they have a lot of hands-on experience. So during um, the lessons, they, they do a lot of things as applications in real life instead of... Uh, like a traditional way, let's say, of like a PowerPoint presentation or just reading through the book. They're very hands-on and, and my students are very happy to see that because sometimes you get into a field where you have no experience at all and you want someone to bring you up to uh, speed. And uh, so, so those instructors definitely help with that. And also, um, I think uh, the uh, accommodations, uh, I get together with them before we start the semester. So they're very accommodating to what our students uh, do, where do they come from. Uh, but I think that uh, background uh, in the field and the experience is pretty much the most uh, important thing because uh, they can run an internship for our students. And my students can be part of this internship, let's say, before they even finish the, the courses. So that'll be that background that they can maybe incorporate into their resume and such. So, but I think that that would be the most important in my opinion. Okay. And Kate, what is, what does your CTE instructor bring to the table? Um, I would say actually it's very similar to what E-Tree was talking about. We have five dental instructors, one of whom is a, um, a retired dentist. So he brings that perspective. Um, and then the other or um, had been working as dental assistants or um, are just teaching now. Sorry, Mike. Go on, buddy. Um, so they bring um, the knowledge that they have, um, their willingness to explain it to students, um, their ability to um, work with students, um, the information that they have. Um, they are super willing to chat with me in advance. The, the dentist who teaches the anatomy class sends me the answer key in advance so that I can sit and work with students um, as needed. Um, they also bring a really great willingness to be supportive and help students figure out how to do this and um, work with us. And frequently, all of them will come to me and say things like, well, what can I do to help this student better? Or how can I work with this student to make them more successful? Um, so we're incredibly lucky in dental as well that our CTE instructors are fully invested in the program as well. OK. Um, I'm going to, you kind of answered this question, both of you did, about how each member actually aids the other member. So I'm going to go to the next question. And, and Kate, I'll start with you. How did your team teaching relationship begin with your dental CTE instructor? Um, well, I, we had um, an orientation very early on. So four semesters ago, um, I was hired 
I think probably late July, early August um, to start that August. So I kind of met them right in um, from the beginning um, at the, we have an orientation as it starts. So I met everybody there. Um, and then we started in the class that first semester I attended 100% of the content classes. So I think one of the things um, that I did that was helpful is I sat down and I did all of the homework too. If we were sitting in class and I didn't understand something um, and it looked like maybe some of the students didn't either and they weren't sure to ask, I would ask. Um, I think it started, you know, too right away from a real respect from the beginning um, and a willingness to work together and a willingness um, to be flexible with each other, um, you know, to be upfront. It, it's awkward. I've been teaching for 20 years and now all of a sudden I'm sitting in somebody else's classroom. Um, it, and yeah, you don't want to, um, you have to be very cognizant of that um, and balance that line between your kind of student-like that first semester, but you're not really student-like. Um, and so you just need to be upfront and honest and say please and thank you and I appreciate you um, and go from there. Okay, and, and Itri, how did your team teaching relationship begin? Uh, yes, yeah, so basically uh, I, I was doing uh, a bridge class that led into the, uh, the IT uh, ICAPS. And so once the bridge class ended, um, I had a meeting with uh, the coordinator of uh, the uh, ICAPS program from the IT department and then he introduced me to the instructors that will be doing this uh, because in my case we don't necessarily have the same instructor all throughout uh, the one year long program. We could have different instructors because of their specialty and since it's like a very technical concept. So I did meet uh, most of the uh, faculty that would be um, teaching uh, our cohort um, and um, I was lucky enough to uh, audit a class. Uh, I thought of this idea, what better um, before you jump into this than learning the trade and that's my recommendation for new teachers is to learn a little bit about this before you say yes because you know you, you definitely want to look uh, a little smarter than your own students, like Kate was saying, right? You you want to know some of the topics before classes start. Uh, so I uh, audited uh, a whole class one semester just to learn um, a little bit about how they run the classroom, how does this thing work, um, and um, I definitely learned that uh, you have to be uh, vocal in this uh, uh, relationship. Uh, like Kate said too, it is a little awkward. Uh, but, um, you know, that's if you're sitting in the back the whole time, that would be awkward. But if you're actually getting a little involved as time goes by, I think that, you know, that uh, that's a nice breaker. And also your students see that you're actually involved for their own uh, good and you're trying to, you know, maybe slow down the instruction at times or ask some questions to make sure that none of your students have, have any specific questions instead of writing them down and waiting for the next day when you're seeing them. Um, so that happened about a couple of years ago and then at, at this point I uh, pretty much know uh, almost everyone that's teaching with us which has been great because I've been doing it for about you know nine semesters now and um, and it's it's great to know them all so if we have any uh, different instructor let's say next semester then most likely I might know the way they teach so that way I can prepare my students uh, for that particular method as, of teaching as well so. Okay, thank you both for, for telling us how it began and also how it evolved. So let's go on and, and discuss, Itri, um, were there any challenges that you faced and, and how did you overcome them? Uh, yes, yeah, so so I think uh, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, and I, and I always think about with every one of my cohort that, uh, that I have um, because um, I think the biggest challenge with, with the ICAPS uh, program uh, is the uh, motivation uh, of some of the students that might be joining it um, because like I wrote down here um, you know every time like a program is free um, you know a lot of students join in and they say well this is uh, you know funded so maybe I can take some college classes and then eventually even if I don't do anything with this particular field I can jump into some other classes so I felt like that was maybe one of the biggest challenges because the other students were very committed to pursuing this as a career, not a job. Um, and 
you know, I've had a couple of students uh, over time that um, you can tell throughout the process that are doing it to get some credits. Um, but, you know, overcoming challenges like that, um, it, it's easy for a teacher because you're, you know, you always want what's best for your students. And um, I guess this is still something beneficial for the ones that are doing it for that reason, because they're still gaining some experience and they can always use that certificate. Uh, but, you know, it's always good to remind those students that, um, you know, this program is is great, it's helping them uh, pay for uh, education, but also, to be honest, from the beginning, next time they do something like this, to try to be honest from the beginning and know, you know, where they want to go instead of taking classes just because they're funded, so. Okay, Kate, were there, what were any challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them? Um, I, I would say similar to what um, Itri was talking about as well. Um, you know, student motivation sometimes can be an issue. Somewhere along the line, somebody told somebody that dental assisting was easy and that they <laughs> could do that. And it's it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. So sometimes we face that. Um, a number of our students are coming at us um, with barriers. Um, the dental assisting, within a semester, you can be working as a dental assistant. Um, and so it's a, it's a quick um, program. So a lot of people with barriers do that. Um, the last couple of semesters, we've had a lot of young mothers, um, which has been great, but there's been kind of bits struggles here and there as kids are getting sick and, you know, other things are happening. So, um, you know, we definitely work with that. Um, we work with our students to give them the resources. We're very lucky at ECC that we have a lot of resources for students. We have childcare on campus. Um, we have a food pantry. Um, we have fantastic tutoring center. We have the ICAPS program. So we work really hard to, to help our students overcome their challenges. Um, and from a personal note, dental assisting is hard. <laughs> and I had to learn it. And, and there were days when I felt like I was about a day and a half ahead of my students in terms of understanding it. Um, but that was just kind of a personal effort. I had to sit down and study and do the homework and practice the material. Um, so I think those would be two of the challenges um, that we've faced. Um, we're incredibly lucky in dental that um, our CTE staff is fully invested in the program. I know that sometimes that can be a challenge in some of the other departments. Um, and then I know the way they overcome that is just continued showing good results, um, you know, being a great team player, um, those kinds of things, and then they are able to win those folks over. Okay, thank you. Um, how do you share time and space um, within your team teaching um, capacity there with your CTE instructor? Uh, do you want me to answer? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Um, so I, I'm there on Friday, so I have my own class. We have we really don't have a lot of classes at ECC on Friday. That's probably our lightest day. So um, I'm actually in the dental materials lab on Fridays, which is really nice because then the students can look at their impressions and their molds and all the things that they're doing um, while they're there. Um, for us, it's really easy just because of the way the classes are sorted out to share that time and space. Um, I don't think we really have any challenges regarding that. Okay, Eitri? How do you share your time and space with your CTE instructor? Uh, very similar to what Kate said. Uh, at uh, College of DuPage, uh, most classes are on Monday through Thursday. Um, so on Fridays, there's like a, some classes uh, like that they run, like most of them have like labs, like chemistry, physics classes. But um, and I same thing, I have my own class on uh, Friday, but also um, our um, instructors here they have uh, their own like office hours as well and we are um, obligated to uh, put in office hours every semester which is great because that would be um, at like a, a time where we can you know meet up and collaborate as well but also for our students if they have any specific questions uh, to come in and see us uh, so it's great to have like a couple of uh, office hours set aside throughout the week for things like this or, you know, or like you said, sharing, you know, even the time and the space throughout the week. So, or mm -hmm. for collaboration as well, so. Okay, so Itri, what is the success rate of your students and how does that compare to other non-ICAP students in your program? Uh, I think our uh, 
success rate with our ICAPS uh, students have been has been great, and I think that's why it's been growing over the past two, three years since we started this process. We developed our bridge classes, and uh, after the bridge classes, we try to uh, send them off towards the uh, the information technology um, and the manufacturing uh, areas. Um, and and the, the reason why I'm saying that it's because um, a lot of our students, when they come in, they, they take like, let's say a couple of ESL classes, a couple of uh, uh, AB, GD classes. And then after that, uh, it has been challenging to guide them towards like a, an area of uh, uh, where they would be studying or, or most of them, um, we maybe we don't see them ever again. They complete their GD program. And after that, they're struggling to get a, a job out there. So uh, with the ICAPS program, bridging them um, and trying to do this in the same time. Now they come in and within a year, not only they have their high school equivalency, but um, they uh, they also have an internship that they've done throughout the year. And, and um, most likely a position is uh, ready for them. Uh, by the end of this, we uh, link them with uh, WorkNet uh, DuPage here. Uh, in our county and our success coaches are uh, LinkedIn. So it's a much bigger team than just me and my um, CTE instructor. They have a success coach. Um, they have the, they help them with their jobs and the resume and the application. So so all these services uh, are for the, uh, the ICAP students, while the students that are taking a traditional ESL or ABE class uh, even though they're aware of those services, they they don't usually utilize them because again, they're focusing mainly on that class that they're in. So for that, uh, the success rate has been great. And also as the as the semesters go by, we've had more and more students, uh, you know, getting uh, prestige jobs out there and coming back and sharing their success stories um, to the next cohort, which has been a great motivation for newer students coming in. Okay, and Kate, what's the success rate of your students, and how does that compare to your other non non ICAP students in your program? Uh, once again, it's very similar to um, Etri as well. Um, our students are definitely doing well within the ICAPS program. We have the same kind of services available to them with resume help, interviewing. We have a program um, that we call Thriving in the Workplace, and they meet with a student a student support specialist who is kind of lateral to me um, and she's the one that helps get them registered but she also helps them with those skills they need in the workplace everything from showing up on time to um, interview help to resume help last semester we had a group of students that um, in our ICAPS program were doing really well and really being successful and some of the non ICAPS students that were in the dental program were dropping the ball they weren't doing everything they were supposed to do and because so much of it is lab work, those students, um, it was affecting our students. So we spent an afternoon talking with them about, um, well, that's going to happen in the workplace too. And how do you deal with it? And how um, do you work with it? So, you know, if you talk about a success rate, you can talk about our, our job rate. Most of our students are working in dental. Um, but I think it's also really important to talk about um, all the other skills that they get. Um, which they don't get when they're not in ICAPS. They don't get that interviewing help. They don't get that help writing their resume. They don't get some of the work, um, some of the support they need to function um, in the workplace. So um, I hope, does that answer the question? I hope that answers the question. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, well, um, let me go ahead and ask you the next question. Um, okay. how, how do you follow up with successful ICAPS students when they leave your program or do you? Um, I, I'm certain that there is some more follow-up, but um, we have a lot of people in our program and everybody kind of has um, their own jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that they follow up with students as best they can. Um, and the dental program is, of course, a, really a three-semester program. So they're with me first semester. And then I see them in the hallways um, second semester. So we have lots of conversations about How's radiology going? And how's that job hunt going? Um, and so there's definitely kind of that one-on-one -on -one informal follow-up. Um, and then they go off to clinicals. And I know the, the dental assisting program follows with them. And I, and I know that they follow um, in general through ICAPS, but I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the specifics as to how they do that. Okay. Itri, do you follow up with your successful students when they leave your program or, or, 
or do you how do you do that if you do it sure yeah yes i do i i'm a huge believer of that uh, you know not cutting the cord uh uh, right after they leave your classes. And of, or also, uh, one of the classes that we um, work with here uh, with the IT is, it's called networking. And it's uh, funny enough, but networking in IT, it's a lot like networking with humans and, and uh, keeping in touch and having your own connections and such. So so as we do that, um, obviously today, it's, it's very easy to keep up with your students because of uh, technology, social media, and one big thing that uh, I've been doing with them throughout our, um, you know, stay together is uh, setting up uh, a LinkedIn account, which I know now 96% of the business out there, that's how they're following up with their hiring process. So basically, we jump into a LinkedIn group and obviously they also have my email. Uh, I also share my, my cell phone number. Uh, I have them on a uh, group text. So I'll call it like, you know, ICAPS 1. I started with uh, that first cohort, ICAPS 2, and now I'm on ICAPS 3. So I have a uh, group text uh, named that way. Uh, and that sometimes for some students, that might be an easier way to keep up. But um, also, like I said, LinkedIn is the first thing that we work on together on doing that. Um, and um, even after they leave, um, we, you know, every every couple of months, sometimes like every month, we'll exchange some text messages um, in, in terms of uh, uh, what's new, um, any anyone has got any new job, share some news. And, and uh, uh, also every six months, uh, we try to do like a luncheon just to keep up, whoever can make it. Um, and and that, that has been really great. I know it's uh, uh, for some people might think it's time consuming, but I think... Um, it's important to them. It's a lot more important to them knowing that we're still there for them and we still care. And if there's a job out there that we maybe we see it in our email or LinkedIn, uh, that we do share it with them because that, that counts also as keeping up with them. But yes, I, I'm definitely very involved uh, and try to uh, keep up with uh, everyone as much as possible to make sure that, you know, um, uh, if they need anything that I can help them with, they know that I'm uh, always there for them. Okay, and and each of all, I have you here. What advice do you have for a new team teacher? Uh, yeah, so, um, and, and you know, I've done some training um, over this past couple of years with our uh, new ICAPS teachers. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because in the beginning, um, um, you, you jump in and you think it's, uh, like I wrote here on my notes, it's just another ESL class or another ABE class. Um, I, I'm going to go into the uh, team teaching and just sit in the back and be quiet, let the other teacher teach. And then, you know, I, I take them under my wing and, you know, they see me. I'm very proactive, very vocal. I try to be very involved uh, with my students. So, so that would be a great advice there, too, that this is uh, not just another class that you're taking on, uh, but it's a, it's a more challenging uh, concept because um, you are actually dealing with a lot of different things aside from just the teaching part. Uh, but it's it's a very exciting concept because you're getting challenged every day and uh, at the end the rewards are much greater than just you know being done with that AB or a GD class. So one of, so some of those advices would be that for the new uh, team teachers and also uh, to learn a little bit about the trade before they jump in. So if you had to pick, if your administrator or your supervisor asks you, you know, which ICAPs would you be willing to do? Don't pick the one that offers the most classes just because you'll be busier with more classes. Pick one that maybe you know a little more about or, or prepare for that trade either by auditing a class like I did or you know, uh, take a class uh, yourself or there's a lot of online resources. Um, that can prep you for a lot of online classes, do a little bit of preparation before, you know, that dental hygiene program they jump in or the IT or the manufacturing, uh, because that'll make a big difference uh, on your ICAP students, uh, especially as, as a supplemental, you being the supplemental material for them in case their instructor um, is not what they hope for, the CT instructor, uh, and they needed some more uh, help so and of course you know you learn um as you go as well and i'm sure with k2 like the first year you you know you, you're learning a lot and then you take that experience with you uh but definitely um 
the preparation aspect beforehand uh, definitely helps uh, take a lot of that difficulty uh, away from your schedule. So, okay, Kate, what advice do you have for any new team teachers? Um, yeah, again, a lot of what um, Itri said, um, just really stepping up with a, a flexible, open mind, um, knowing a little bit about your content area or being willing to dive in. I, I, I have to tell you, I didn't know much about teeth at all. I, as I started, I didn't understand the difference between a hygienist and an assistant. Um, and so, you know, I jumped in and, um, and really learned a lot um, because I was willing to step up um, and do the work. Um, and be a part of it. Um, work hard to have an open, friendly relationship with your CTE instructors. Um, I'm a huge believer in lots of please and thank yous, and I appreciate you. Um, I feel like those things make um, a real difference. Um, and don't ever be afraid to ask a question. There have been plenty of times where I've gone to the director or one of the other instructors and said, all right, they've asked me this question, and I'm not really certain I understand, you know, when do I use a long needle versus a short needle? And sometimes, again, just that extra um, bit of explanation makes it easier for you because it's not just that you have to understand the material, you have to turn around and be able to teach it. So don't ever be afraid to ask a question um, because odds are that it's a question that maybe even the students didn't even know they had. Um, so definitely do that. Be flexible, be open-minded, um, be willing to do the work, um, and have some fun. I mean, these are students that tend to to really want to do what they're doing, um, and they're really enjoying it. So, um, yeah, definitely be willing to enjoy it. Okay. Do you have anything else to share, Kate? Um, nothing specifically comes to mind. If, if you have anyone has questions, we'd be happy to answer them or try to find an answer. Okay, and we're gonna, we're going to open that up to them in just a moment. But okay. Itri, do you have anything else to share before we open it up for questions? Uh, I just wanted to add it to um, you know the the ESL and the GD AV students. I, I wanted to like reiterate on that that this is this can work. I, I truly believe that it can work for you know both sides of the students coming in, and and it's a life changing experience. And you know, like Kate said. They already have that motivation coming in. They know what they're uh, getting into. But I, I definitely want to, uh, you know, reiterate that that you know our ESL students uh, and there's a lot of ESL students in every department. They can uh, totally do this, and and we can definitely change their lives. Um, you know, uh, coming into the ICAPS program for sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this time. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, want to type it into the chat box. We'll be happy to entertain any questions. I'm sure Itri and, and Kate would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So we'll we'll give you a moment to uh, to type in any questions that you might have. While we're doing that, I I really want to thank Itri and and Kate because they're taking time out of their spring break to share their expertise with us today. And I know that was asking a lot, but I really appreciate their willingness to to take that time and I know Kate you're you're at home with your little one so so uh, I, I really appreciate that um, we have a comment that someone said that you did a great job um, and, and we, we I agree with that wholeheartedly Lynn so if there are any other questions um, just type away and we'll be happy to entertain those questions if not we'll give it a moment and then we'll see what you have but Kate or Itri, do you have anything else to add while they're while they're uh, typing in any questions? Well, I just wanted to thank you, Bevan, for bringing us here, you know, and and sharing our uh, thoughts and um, and also I wanted to say uh, this is a learning process and uh, um, you know it, it's nice, uh, like Kate said too, to make it fun as well. You know, mentioned that that you know that this is uh, um, again we we have to reiterate that idea of this is a uh, not just a job but it's a career and and uh, that's how important this ICAP program could be for a lot of those students um, uh, which is which is great yeah okay it doesn't look like we have any questions and so again I want to thank everyone for attending today we hope that that you gain some more knowledge about team teaching for ICAPS and we, again, a thank you to our panelists, and I guess we'll be signing off. Oh, wait a minute, we have a question. Um, 
JJC has learned so much when we visited Elgin Community College. Thanks for collaborating. Um, that's what one one uh, Michelle. Michelle Lyman said. So Kate, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you everyone for um, listening and being willing to examine and, and try ICAPS. It's really a fantastic program, um, and and it really really helps our students a lot. We have another question. Do do you see changes in teaching from the content teachers from this experience? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, um, the dentist I work with um, was a practicing dentist for something like 35 years um, and he retired and he just in general is a fantastic person and, and he'll tell you flat out having me in the class has helped him. Um, as I said, I've been an educator for 20 years and he's so great about at the end of class, I'll be like, hey, so I was just kind of watching that and I wondered if maybe you did it this way, it might work better and he'll be like, well, that's a great idea. Let's definitely do that. I mean, he's definitely adjusted um, what he does based on, you know, gentle conversation with me. I don't go up and announce all the things that he did wrong. Um, yeah, definitely. All of I think all of our CTE students are more aware of maybe the barriers that are in place um, for students um, and those kinds of things. Okay, great. Itri, have you noticed a change? Yes, I was actually going to talk about that as well, uh, because, um, you know, most of them, their background is not in uh, education. And then you do notice that where a lot of things, the way they do things or th sometimes the way they grade uh, certain, uh, you know, papers or essays or uh, exams and, you know, will collaborate and actually over time they'll realize, wow, you know, maybe I should have done it this way or use an Excel spreadsheet to keep uh, uh, notes on, um, you know, everybody's like attendance or the exam, especially with information technology uh, teachers, you know, most uh, information technology instructors are introverts and they tell us from the beginning, you know, I don't like to talk much. I'm just a geek, like I'm an IT geek, you know, I want to fix computers, fix the printers. But, you know, you, you do have to talk when you're teaching a class and you, you're trying to uh, train them and give them your trade. So, uh, so having the adult educator there, um, like myself and Kate, makes a big difference. And they do. Uh, she's right. They, I have seen them change their model over time because they realized that was uh, much more successful that way, and it kept them more organized. So, yes, you're right. Okay. Oh. Well, and thank you to both of you um, for not only impacting our adult education students, but impacting all of the students at your college by um, affecting change. So we really appreciate that. There was another question about the re this recording. It'll be on the ICAPS website and also under the ICSPS Transitions Academy section. Um, so it'll be both places for you. And we'll send out an announcement to the field letting them know that this is available. Give us a little bit of time to render this and get it ready to, to put up, but it should be pretty quickly. So if you want to share this information, it'll be out there shortly. Okay, again, thank you, Kate, and thank you, Itri, and thank everyone for, for participating. Um, there's one more question about a certificate. So, Sarah. so if you want, we are not going to self-generate certificates. If you want a certificate for this particular webinar, um, I'm going to throw my uh, contact information up for everybody. This is Sarah Goldhammer. And if you email me, I will be happy to send you a certificate. Um, and maybe I need to put in the right... Um, email address or else you aren't going to get it to me. So there you go. So sgoldam at siue.edu and I will get you a certificate. Again, thank you all and thank the present the panelists for today and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Bevan. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.